more than ever before, competition is keen. The workforce is made up of skilled personnel. Management requires more and more education. Yet today, a greater number of young people aren't completing their schooling or going on to higher education. In fact, many aren't even finishing high school. Today, almost a third of the students who enter high school will drop out before they graduate. They'll be known as the dropouts. The reasons for dropping out are individual and numerous. At the time, they probably seem justifiable. To Robert, the future looks bright. He's checked out of school and bids farewell to his girl and friends. Your newfound freedom holds the promise you've been waiting for, doesn't it, Robert? No more educational restrictions, the time to work and make enough to support your pleasures and your car. This is your world, Robert, and at the moment, this world looks good. But as the days turn into weeks, the vision begins to tarnish. You find that the kind of job you envision for yourself is not available. Time after time, the employers shake their heads. The faces are different, but the answer is always the same. Sorry, son, but we require more education. Now a new threat appears upon the horizon. Even with the restrictions imposed upon your time by school, there used to be an order to your life. You belonged. You had an anchor in a social institution. Now you feel adrift. It's no longer your team, and the victory isn't as sweet or the defeat so painful. You're on the outside looking in. Even after the game, when Jim joins you, there doesn't seem to be anything to talk about. And Alice, too. You're not as close. Maybe it's because her parents don't want her going with a young man who's not working or not in school. Now you meet in secret, but that will change once you find employment. The need for a job becomes imperative. The employment service tries to help, but after a battery of tests and consultations, you're classified as a common laborer. Again, the image of yourself is shaken. You didn't expect to start as a junior executive, but you didn't expect to be a busboy either. You and Alice have less and less to talk about. Her world is still very much associated with school, while day by day you grow farther away from school activities because you no longer feel you belong. When you talk, you talk of marriage in the future, but even that holds little promise because you know that without a job, that future is impossible. Besides, her parents are exerting more and more pressure, and in turn, she's putting pressure on you. She wants you to go back to school or get a job, any job. The pressure isn't only from Alice. Your parents are exerting it too. They want you to go back to school. Your father is irritable about everything. He can't understand why you should stay in bed till noon. He thinks it's because you're lazy. He doesn't know that by sleeping you can forget the loneliness of the morning hours when your friends are in school or working. Your mother tries to understand and stations herself someplace between your two points of view, but this only makes it worse. Finally, the pressure becomes too great, and you downgrade your image one more step and take a job as busboy. Alice is happy. Your relationship seems improved. Now she can combat her parents' arguments with the fact that you're working. You both kid yourself that your employment has a future. For a little while, you live in this limbo of rationalization. You begin to make plans about your future, but as you do, you begin to see the futility of it all. You both know your job won't support a marriage. Alice's parents want her to go to junior college. 
that means two years at least. The vision of your future starts to crumble, and with the crumbling, you begin to bicker and quarrel. Then one day, over some inconsequential argument, you decide to break up. Your paths are now divided. Now your job becomes a chore. At first it was fun working where the gang collected after school. You got to see your friends. But you soon found out that working part-time in a subservient position while attending school and working full-time at the same kind of job are quite different things. You are no longer one of the gang, and cleaning up after your friends makes you feel inferior. Then one night it happens. Jim, his girl, Alice, and her date come in after a school dance. Suddenly you feel sick. It's all you can do to take their orders. That night you quit. The news is met with anything but understanding by your father. He's almost livid. The fact that you quit without the prospects of another job is beyond his comprehension. Where before he grumblingly went along with the mornings in bed till noon, now he rolls you out when he leaves for work. His stand is firm. If it's tough to find employment, then you have to try twice as hard. In a last desperate effort to upgrade the image of yourself, you don a coat and tie and try to find employment above the grade of unskilled labor. You make an honest effort, but the facts haven't changed. You're a dropout. Not enough education, no high school diploma. The heads shake, the lips move, but the answer is always the same. Sorry, son, but we require more education. Now you only see your friends occasionally, and when you do, the moments are brief and embarrassed. It's the end of summer and Jim is going on to college. You wish him luck, knowing that you aren't likely to see him again. And if you do, you'll have even less in common than you do now. You need money for gas, your car needs work. You've already borrowed from your mother and your friends. You've got to have some cash. You canvass all the possibilities for unskilled labor. Jobs aren't easy to find. The unskilled labor market is greater than the need. Employers, given a choice, would rather have an older person who they feel is more reliable and less likely to be temporary. You begin to lose initiative. You don't try as hard. You adopt an attitude of, I don't care. Things at home become worse and you spend less time there. You begin to drift in earnest. You leave early and return late. Much of your day is spent wandering aimlessly in the less desirable sections of town. You meet new friends. They're like yourself. They have no place to go, nothing to do, and lots of time to do it in. The most popular hangout for your newfound friends is a pool hall on the senior side of town. The group consists of men of all ages, but they have one thing in common. They're beat. They have no ambition, no drive, and no illusions. What's worse, they don't seem to care. They don't say so, but you can see it in their faces. You don't know much about Jake, except that he's never far from the pool hall. As you watch him being cuffed, your mind races. Thoughts tumble one upon the other. How unlike Jake are you? Can you continue the way you're going and stay out of trouble? You wish you knew.